they tell you uh, for you to fix a fatty liver avoid alcohol which is perfect and then lose weight let me tell you something about this weight and the fatty liver there are people who don't have weight but they have a fatty liver why because they've been eating fruits so they have a fatty they, they are fat from inside outside they look very lean so when they tell you that obesity is the cause of a fatty liver that's a lie there's a correlation there's a correlation let me just put it that way but it's not a causation so obesity does not cause a fatty liver but a fatty liver can actually cause you obesity because a fatty liver is the mother of insulin resistance and insulin resistance is actually a mother to obesity overweight uh, yeah weight gain diabetes hypertension and the rest the metabolic syndrome so you can be obese without a fatty liver yes that is true but most people who have a fatty liver are obese so don't don't confuse that because there are so many people who have a fatty liver without even knowing and they are very lean so this is the stepwise way of getting the fatty liver disease. So if you have a fatty liver disease, this is how you got there. Number one, overload. So this is the time you start writing those notes. People who are diabetic or people who have a fatty liver. So somebody who has a fatty liver will end up getting insulin resistance, which will bring diabetic mellitus, okay? Type 2 diabetes. But this person is given drugs for diabetes. So this is a challenge to you. So when you have a fatty liver disease or those ladies who have PCOS, you are given metformin. Metformin is a drug that improves the sensitivity of insulin on the cells so that blood sugars are pumped from blood into the cells, the cells, the fat cells. So if you have a fatty liver and then you end up having diabetes and I give you drugs for diabetes, do you think you'll ever survive? Do you think you'll ever survive? Because remember this, that drugs for diabetes are treating the symptoms, the high blood sugar. So they are taking the, the sugars from blood and dumping it into the cells. So if they are dumping these blood sugars into the cells, will you ever survive? Do you now see why people who are diabetic and they are on high doses of anti-diabetic drugs are the same same people who end up losing their eyesight? They are the same same people who will end up getting amputation, yeah, kidney transplant and dialysis. They'll get uh, their eyes going. They'll get their nerves failing. Do you see the relationship? It's because drugs for diabetes do not treat anything. They do not treat the cause. What they do is they help you dump sugar in the cells. Now, if at all you are a person who is thinking, your doctor has told you that diabetes is a problem and that these blood sugars are supposed to be taken out of the system, of the body, to somewhere but gives you a drug that pumps glucose from blood into the cells. Are we really doing away with the sugars? <laughs> are we? Do you now see how drugs for diabetes cannot help you recover? Because they are dumping sugar from blood into the cells. So they are actually helping you to continue eating carbohydrates. Look at insulin. Insulin pumps blood uh, sugar from blood into the cells, the fat cells, for you to keep on adding weight. You keep on growing fat. So what are you treating? You're just dumping fat glucose into the fat cells. That is one. Number two, insulin helps you to keep on being an addict of carbohydrates because when you inject insulin, your blood sugars go down, lower than normal. Guess what is going to happen? Your body will start getting the carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms, so it will send you into cravings to eat more sugar. You take sugar, your blood sugars go up above normal range. When your blood sugar goes up below normal range, guess what they tell you? Inject insulin. You inject insulin again, it takes it into lower. So it's like you're playing a game with your, with your system. Eat carbohydrates, get high glucose. Inject insulin, get low glucose. Eat sugar, get high glucose. And you know of your diabetic relative who has been told that your blood sugars are very low, drink some soda or lick some, some that glucose in the packet. It's actually not glucose. It's dextrose monohydrate. That packet of glucose that you think is glucose is not glucose. It is dextrose monohydrate. That is not glucose. So they tell you to lick that chemical. You lick it, your blood sugars are super high. Again, now you have to inject insulin. So you're you're simply playing a game with your system. And that's why you'll never recover from this condition. Because you're keeping you keep dumping sugars from blood into the cells that are already full. For you to become diabetic, these cells are unable to utilize the glucose. They have it, but they cannot utilize it. So if you take a drug, the insulin injection, or this most of these drugs for diabetes, they simply dump glucose into the cells. So it's not leaving your body. So they are telling you, we'll keep dumping glucose into the dump site, those cells. So how then, Daktari, am I supposed to recover from diabetes when this glucose is being pumped into my cells? I thought a drug is supposed to clear glucose from my body, from my system generally. So where is it taking this glucose to? In the cells. So how will I recover from diabetes? You will not. 
diabetes is managed in the kitchen. So, number one, overload. So, how do you get to a fatty liver? Overload. What overload? Alcohol. You drink too much alcohol. I definitely recommend no alcohol at all. There's nothing like too much. You just drink alcohol. So, no alcohol. Don't overload that liver. Because if you overload it with alcohol, what do you expect? You are overworking the liver. You are overloading it with sugars, with simple carbohydrates, the processed foods. So your liver is always struggling to convert this into energy. So you are overloading the liver. You are overworking it. Alcohol, sugar, and toxins. Where are we getting the toxins from? Medications. Did you know that drugs in Kenya are regulated by a pharmacy and poisons? Board? <laughs> Did you know that... <laughs> Drugs are regulated by a pharmacy and poisons board. Do you know that? That board that actually starts targeting small uh, chemists. Every time there is a problem, they start targeting small chemists to show you that they are working. They are always there. They, 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 they hold captive of these small pharmacies, small chemists everywhere to show you that they are working. But they don't catch the big fish. They'll produce all these lists of these pharmacies, these chemists that don't have licenses. But they don't talk about the big pharmacies, the pharmacies, the ones that are, are held or are actually, uh, uh, they, they belong to the, the politicians. <laughs> they don't talk about them. It was that governor, the ex-governor of Nairobi. You remember that guy? The, the pharmacist. <laughs> Anyway, drugs are toxins. Foods that we eat nowadays, the processed foods are toxins. Pesticides that are coming from GMO foods and the herbicides, the glyphosates are toxins. All the poisons that you take in are toxins. So when you overload the liver with poisons, those people are always on medication. Every time you go to the pharmacy, you pick drugs. Your house is like a mini pharmacy. Your car is a mini pharmacy. You're just a walking mini pharmacy yourself. Those people who have more than seven drugs on a prescription, you you are going to get a serious problem. You are going to overwork your liver through those toxins because the liver is the one that detoxifies the system. Detoxifies the system. So if you don't supply the liver with vitamin E in natural forms, not the supplements, you'll end up suffering all these problems. So those poisons, those toxins, those drugs and medications, those heavy metals, ladies, every time you're using a skin product, you want to lighten your skin. Every time you're inject, injecting yourself with some things, you want to lose weight. Every time you're taking medications for something, they end up in the liver. You're messing up that liver. That is the overload stage. So we start there. You start by overloading your liver. It strains to bring back the egg game. It keeps on saving you. Every time you mess it, it saves you. Every time you mess it, it saves you. But it gets to a time it's tired. So that's step number one, the overload. Then number two, this overload that you're causing the system with the sugars, the drugs, the toxins, the poisons, what does it do? It causes inflammation in the liver because you start building fat. The fruits that you're eating start building fats in the liver. Fats are highly inflammatory. So therefore, your liver starts being inflamed. So inflammation still is number two to getting a fatty liver. And when you get a fatty liver, of course, insulin resistance is there. Insulin resistance is the mother to all the metabolic syndrome, obesity, hypertension, diabetes, type 2, kidney disease, heart disease, high triglycerides, and fats in the system. And now you keep on causing more inflammation by using those vegetable oils and the seed oils. More inflammation to the liver. The liver still struggles, still helps you because it has a capacity or capability to rejuvenate. So it keeps on rejuvenating to actually make sure that you're safe. So even though you step on it, it still has a goodwill for you. And then of course, autoimmune conditions. Because you messed up your adrenal glands through sugar, seed oils and wheat products. Now your adrenal glands are unable to help your immunity to just not to overreact. You end up getting an autoimmune condition. You start messing the liver. And also wheat is highly inflammatory. And wheat actually exacerbates autoimmune conditions. And then of course stress. Because stress limits the blood flow towards the liver. Once that happens, the liver starts getting inflamed. Also, stress limits the liver's ability to repair itself. So as you log yourself with chronic stress, there are things that you can handle, there are those that you can't. There are things that can be handled through prayer, there are things that can be handled through activity and action. So don't put prayer everywhere. Nowadays, I see people, I see these pastors telling you to put your hand inside your... your 
to just touch your farts. And now they pray for you that fart will disappear. My friend, you will get stressed up because that fart is not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. You, lo you lose sleep because of something that is actually troubling you. As you lose sleep, you increase your cortisol levels. Those cortisol levels start causing inflammation in the liver. And now you have all these problems. So as you increase your stress levels, you are actually limiting the blood flow towards the liver. You're also blocking the liver's ability to rejuvenate and to heal. So you're blocking the healing process of the liver. That is a problem. As you take that commercial toothpaste that has fluoride, you're causing high stress in the system. You end up having issues with the liver. And you're wondering, I've been using the best this one has is good for sensitivity. I'm like, you're good for sensitivity. You simply use salt, simply use activated charcoal, simply use coconut oil or bicarbonate of soda to brush your teeth. So number one, we said overload. Number two, we've said inflammation. So after overload, you get to inflammatory stage where we have the accumulation of fat. Now, once you have accumulated that fat, we have had that inflammation. Remember, a fatty liver is not, the cells are not pathological. They are just full of fat. But when you start getting to the inflammatory stage, that's when you start getting a problem because inflammation will end up yielding the scarring, which you call the liver fibrosis, and the cirrhosis, the liver cirrhosis. That is where it starts becoming a serious problem to you. And at that moment in time, you fed yourself so much of bad foods, of bad toxins. Inflammation has been super. And now it's time for you to start reaping the results. This is the time when you start getting those injections and those medications. Now you start considering a liver transplant. And now finally, instead of them, by the way, this is a medical mindset that we need to fix things. We need to fix things. This is a problem. That when you have a fatty liver, we need to treat that liver. Instead of treating the cause, we need to treat the liver. If you have, uh, let, let's say, like an ear problem, we need to, to treat the ear. Instead of focusing on what caused this problem, always ask the why. Why do I have an ear problem? Why do I have a vision problem? I have two eyes that are having problems of vision. And now you add me more, two more eyes in form of spectacles. Now I have four eyes that I cannot even utilize. <laughs> so I started with two defected eyes. Instead of you handling the cause, you, end, you ended up and peeled off my eye. Peeled off that layer of the eye. Fixing the symptoms. And then you gave me spectacles. Or you gave me a goat eye. And nobody fixed the symptoms. Nobody fixed the cause. All of us are trying. That is a medical mindset. Medical mindset is always trying to fix something. You have a fatty liver. Oh, we can do away with it. We can replace it. You have a defected heart. Oh, we can do away with the heart. We can replace it. But you did not. How did that heart end up becoming problematic? How did that liver end up making more cholesterol? What caused that? Why? Because if you ask the why, you will be treating the cause. You will not be treating the symptoms. That's the beauty about this. That's the beauty about our channels because we tell you what caused diseases. When we tell you that, we make sure that you have the information to reverse the condition, not to treat and manage the symptoms. So now you have to supply your body with the nutrients that actually will help the body from uh, to start the healing processes. For those people who have a fatty liver, they know a deficiency in an amino acid that is called cysteine and glutathione. Glutathione is a, is a substance that the liver uses to detoxify your system, to detoxify drugs. Pharmacists know that glutathione is actually used to detoxify specifically paracetamol. Paracetamol is one of the most toxic drugs to the liver. So as you pop those pills of paracetamol every other time because of a headache, simply know paracetamol is one of the most toxic drugs to your liver. So it will mess up your liver. But glutathione is there to help you detox the liver. There's another substance that is called choline. Choline is a substance that actually helps your liver dissolve fat. So if you have fat in the liver, if you up the game of choline, you detoxify the liver, you dissolve that fat. And where do we get the choline? A higher content of choline is in the egg yolks. But what do they tell you? Drop eggs when you have a fatty liver disease because of cholesterol. You see, glutathione is rich in eggs also and green leafy vegetables. Specifically the cabbage. Remember we said for you to feed the liver, feed it with choline. And choline is rich in eggs. Feed it with glutathione. Very rich in cabbage juice. Very rich in the eggs also. Feed it with something called the amino acid cysteine. Amino acid cysteine is rich in red meat. Make it fatty. And then feed the liver with bile. Bile comes from cholesterol. So therefore eat cholesterol rich foods for you to get bile.
if you have those four things, adequate detox. So what am I saying? For you to detox, fast. For you to detox, enjoy cabbage juice. For you to detox, enjoy the eggs. For you to detox, enjoy the red meat, fatty meats, for that matter. <laughs> and for you to detox, eat saturated fats, the ghee, the tallow, the coconut oil, the butter, the cheese. Enjoy them. 